I'm Martin Smith, and I talk to a lot of people that have a hard time getting bolts off sometimes when a regular socket set won't do it. Uh, this is a 12-point socket on here. This is something that you should know. Is Each one of these sockets have different sets of points on them. The 12s are okay, but they will slip. So if you've got a uh, top of the head of a, a bolt that's messed up, it's not going to come out easily. If you have uh, combination wrenches like these, you take the one that fits, you take another one, see how this one angles downwards. You put the downward side inside of that and it gives you an extra handle. And if you have no space up here, you can reach in it with wrenches and torque them off. Second option is you buy yourself one of these big long breaker bars what these things do is they break here instead of uh, ruining an expensive ratchet. And it gives you extra, extra leverage. You can put a pipe around that small ratchet, but what happens is inside the ratchet gear system, uh, you can bust those things up. And they're, like I say, these things are cheaper to use and they have a bar, an extension bar to go with them. If you need more power than that, you can put a pipe on it. Uh, I have enough strength to bust to uh, shear one of these things off so I don't put a pipe. This is on a hydraulic system so these don't get stuck easily. It has oil in it and the oil actually gets into it and uh, keeps the bolts from locking up, rusting, and seizing. But if they seize, this is the next method that I'd advise using. After that, it's called a penetrating oil. You can buy them at any car place and WD-40 is pretty much the same thing. Penetrating oil only. No, you don't use motor oils or anything like this. This type of oil gets in the cracks and crevices and actually gets absorbed by rust and it will break up the rust. And how you use this, and this can happens to be empty. There we go. You put it on, uh, you wait for two hours, you put more on, you wait 24 hours, and then you come back and try and break it open again. Oh, it's right in front of me. If you have bad heads, then you go in and you get the six point, and you might want to get them in metric also, because sometimes these heads get boogered up so badly that uh, the standard won't fit, and every once in a while, you can take a hammer, yeah, when I say hammer, you can take just about anything and pound them in. Every once in a while, and since there's no real set way of getting these things off, this is a pipe wrench. They're better in aluminum, uh, easier to store, easier to keep, but these, the metal ones are cheaper. And if worse comes to worse, you just put one of these things on and turn, and it'll either shear the head off or it'll pull the bolt out. Uh, on something like this, it's not really that important that every single one of these bolts hold, but on some things that it is, so you might want to go with the uh, penetrating oil and give it lots of time. If the penetrating oil doesn't work, Day. If the penetrating oil doesn't work, then you can use heat. Normally you heat around the object and not the bolt. And on heaters I go with the, this one is MAP gas. If you get the propane, uh, get the short tanks because then you can set them down straight up and you don't put the tip in the dirt because if you lay this one down, this tip always seems to roll in the dirt. The other thing I advise is getting the auto lights, which all you have to do is and I guess it's running low on that too, wonderful. But what you're doing as you're heating these things up, uh, then you're using expansion. So you're expanding the bolts inside the metal and that expansion and contraction can bust the rust loose or whatever's holding it in place. And if I had a hammer, another good 
way of breasting these things loose is to put constant pressure on your breaker bar and take a hammer, not this type of hammer, a regular hammer, uh, not a rubber mallet either. You need a uh, brass hammer will work the best for not tearing up your for not tearing up your wrenches. But uh, brass hammer if you have it, steel hammer if you don't. And sometimes what you're getting off is more important than your wrench that you're using. Don't feel, don't be afraid to ruin a wrench trying to get a bolt out. And you just hit it while you have constant pressure on it, and sometimes that tapping motion will bust them free. Another good way to, that works is to get an impact wrench and when you use these things you need to make sure that you use the uh, impact wrench sockets. They'll be six points or almost all of them are six points. You can find some that are twelve but most of them are six. And they will generally pull them off really quick. Wrong size. Okay, something to know about older equipment. Uh, the older it is, the less they put into engineering for maintenance. So, taking off plates is something that becomes rather important to do. On this one here, I had to take off all these plates to get to this hose right here. It's about uh, two and a half to three inches in diameter and approximately three and a half to four feet long. So uh, the bolts, there, there's four bolts hooking it up to it with two locking plates that hook up the hydraulic hose. And they don't really consider maintenance uh, to be a factor when they're putting this thing together. They consider assembly part of the cost of selling the product, not maintenance. And I have to let out all my breath in order to turn sideways and get down here and when I get the, to the bottom plate where the floorboard is going through it it's only about this wide so I can get one eye in there and if I reach in all the way I'm uh, six foot three I can barely reach the bolts so just because the machine is bigger doesn't mean that you're gonna have more room to work inside of them and the secret to getting plates off is that of putting them on putting them together properly so they don't seize up Okay, one angle grinder. Make sure I know which direction, so it's turning in this it's turning in that direction. So I want to take this bolt and just touch up. I only want to hit I only want to hit two or three threads up here. So I'm like I say, I'm putting it up against here and just resting it up against that. What this does is it puts a small groove in there. I went a little bit too deep on this one for a normal, but it cleans out all the trash in the thread. So when you t when you put them in, take them apart a lot, this groove here can make all the difference between you uh, tearing up all your threads on the inside. Took a grinder, put a groove in here. What that does is it cleans out the internal threads. And on top of that, I took a wire brush, went around it, cleaned that out. And this is gray anti-seize. And you can put as much of this stuff on as you want to. It does not hurt anything. Make it easy for the bolt to come out. So it's not a big problem. What it, what it does is it keeps it from lock it, locking up or rusting together. And if you start by putting the bolts in properly, you will get a lot further along when you have to take this thing off again to do more maintenance to it. So on these hard bolts, I'm going to tighten this longer one all the way down and get the internal threads cleaned out a little bit because they were real dirty. I'm going to take a big old glob of gray stuff. A big old glob of gray. And 
and the Caterpillar washers have, uh, I don't know if you can see them or not, but they, they're sort of sloped this way, so they're compression washers. So you can press down them quite a bit and the washers will have a little bit of spring load to them and that keeps them from unwinding as the machine's running. And again, this machine's real old so it has a lot of rust on it. So I want to tighten it down a little bit less than it would normally be tightened if they were new because there's actually less threading in here. The rust has taken off uh, a pretty significant amount of the threads. So they're not going to have as much hold on them as a, as a new one would have.